Welcome to Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. My name is Talib Jasser, founder and CEO of Afros and Audio Podcast Festival and the Vanguard Podcast Network. I'm excited to spotlight 29 outstanding indie podcast creatives and professionals who answer the call to be a part of the series. My guest today is Jonathan Jones. Welcome and thank you for being here. How are you? I'm good, brother. How are you I'm doing? I'm doing man? well. I'm doing well. It's great to be able to share this space with you, this time with you, and get to know more about you, the podcast, the network and the services you provide. So let's jump in. Can you share your journey into podcasting and what inspired you to start Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones? Yeah, so great question. So kicking off, and I'll be brief on this one, but rewinding back, man, I started speaking first and then I hit a wall and I'm trying to figure out how can I get more people's attention? How can I connect with more people that I don't already know? So then this was around that time where Gary Vee was saying, everybody needs to start a podcast. Everybody needs to start a podcast. So at this time, my videographer, Reginald Titus, me and him, we started talking. And then he said he was going to start his podcast. Then I started my podcast, which is initially titled Jonathan Jones Speaks, the podcast, right? Because I wanted to grow the brand, Jonathan Jones Speaks. So that that's where everything really kicked off, man. And this was what? late 2016 beginning of 2017 because i knew that i had to get in front of more people and then i felt that podcasting was the way so that's how we started then i rebranded it and named it speak your success and then i'll fast forward a little bit more pandemic happened and they're shutting down schools because like i said i was a speaker first and they're shutting down opportunities that i had and different things like that so now i'm in the spot to where i'm trying to figure out and go reverse engineer, if you will, and trying to figure out how can I do something to where it still brings me joy. I don't get burnt out by it, but it also would be a smart business decision. And that was when Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones came about because I said, I want to gear this content towards student athletes. I want to provide them with life after school type tangible instructions and application that they can begin to apply into their lives. And man, then the rest is history. So I started that to be able to speak at more colleges and partner with their student athletes in that way. That's awesome. I love the progression of it, the pivots, the renaming, all of that stuff. It's a part of the process and be willing to say, yeah, we did that. It was A-B testing. I'm working it out. With, and even if it's A-B testing with my own self, <laughs> that's uh -huh. enough. And so I love that you were able to keep progressing the work while remaining true to the original plan and the initial come from. That's super dope. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, man, and, and one, one, thing I, one thing I love that you just said, Talib, is the fact that the people who don't start the podcast yet, right? They're like, well, I, I, give me the instructions, give me the equipment I need, all of those things. But the way that you're going to learn most about podcasting is you going through the journey yourself and then you perfecting it and you taking stuff that you learned from Afros and audios and you taking stuff that you might've learned from other conferences and different people, but then still putting your own tweak on it. So man, you just hit a major point. I don't want the people to miss that. You're going to learn through your own journey and through your own experience. Yeah. That's period. the only way to learn is to F around and find out. Yeah, so yeah, with yeah. your emphasis on helping student athletes transition from college to career, how do you incorporate this mission into your podcasting and your content creation? For sure. And uh, this is the part where I, I don't want this to be confusing, but this is the part. So I, I go to colleges and now I speak on podcasting, just period, because I'm at the point now to where I believe that anybody in any industry can leverage a podcast. So depending on the audience that I talk to, I just make it appeal to them in that way, in that moment. So going on campus and the biggest struggle that student athletes have is the identity piece, right? And one thing about podcasters, we share more of our identity as we share those experiences. And then we are in a spot to where we're able to identify who we really are. So I hit on that piece for them and then going through just the ebbs and flows of podcasting, equipment not working, uh, this platform doesn't work the best or where are these other tools? This is critical thinking. So I'm, I'm sharing these tools and these strategies with them through my content and through the presentations that I do on campus. So that's how we're incorporating podcasting into their lives. Awesome. And how has that been going? The adoption of podcasting for a lot of people, people know about it. I mean, we're grateful now that in 2024, there's not a lot of people 
that we have to say a podcast mm -hmm. is <laughs> before we get started. Mm -hmm. We all have this kind of baseline understanding of podcasting at this point in life. Gratefully, there's still a lot of people mm -hmm. that get to be educated about it, but you're already starting from that base level. So from the other aspect of it, how do you encourage and appeal to people who are like, I don't know, what will that do for me? Or what will that do for my brand or the things that I think or believe? How has that adoption been inside of your conversations and your speaking engagements? For sure. So I, I come at it from an approach of Who's a content creator, right? I asked that question in the last workshop. I say, raise your hand if you put out content this week, last week. Everybody's raising their hand, they're raising their hand, they're raising their hand. And I'm like, okay, well, basically you're a podcaster. And I know some people might disagree. Uh, but the reason why I want to come at it from that approach is because sometimes people see podcasts or they hear podcasts and they make it this massive thing and they create all these barriers and they give you all these reasons why they can't do it. So I wanted to come at an approach that was already normalized for them. Right. And then by doing that, then I began to familiarize them with ways that they can begin to incorporate this every day. You wake up and you go through this process. Right. You brush your teeth. You make this protein shake and you go work out. You do whatever you do. And I said, imagine if you just documented it one day, you just told people what you're doing as you go through it. It's normal to you, but there's somebody out there that wants to know that process. They want to know what you're doing. They want to know what protein you're drinking. So letting them know these things, but most importantly, letting them know that there are people who are looking up to them, people that want to learn from them, then this is the way to where it really makes it an easy injection for them as opposed to them thinking of, oh my goodness, a podcast. I got to go into a studio. I got to buy all these lights and do all this. So I start off slow. And then as we educate them and that confidence is building, then we'll add on other pieces. But I start off slow, start off real slow. No, I, that's awesome. I love that. And that it does get to be as niche as it can be. There's an opportunity for mm -hmm. that. And to start off in a space that you understand the knowledge you have. It, something, it was a phrase that changed my mind in a lot of ways. And it said that your base level of knowledge and information is somebody else's like blow your mind, right? I never thought of it from that mm -hmm. perspective. I've never knew mm -hmm. about that specific thing, right? We happen to be in this, it's just me space all the time. It's just me. Who am I to tell mm -hmm. this or speak this mm -hmm. or provide this message? And that is something that definitely is a socialized belief and behavior, but we, we got to get out of this. It's just me. So why would anybody want to hear from me? A um, mentality that we get in that stops us from moving forward. So I love that you start there. Like you got it. You just now let's do something with it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because I'm 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 sure you can relate to this as well. Because yet nobody sees themselves as high as other people see them or view them, right? So understanding that we have to take a real critical lens to ourselves at times just so that we can give ourselves credit. We need to take a step back every once in a while and say, what have I successfully accomplished? Okay, you graduated high school. I don't know the percentage of people that graduate high school, but I'm sure there's a lot that haven't. Then if we take it a step further, okay, you've graduated college or you started your own business or you've done a public speaking engagement or you created a product, whatever it might be, these are all things. These are all stair steps to where we can look at and say, if I've done that successfully, then I can show somebody else how to do that or I can teach somebody else. And I, I think that's one of those things that also can can really chip away at that imposter syndrome because we're so hard on ourselves, like so hard. People, it, some of the most accomplished people, you'll ask them like, what's next for you? They're like, I don't know, but I need to go do something else. It's like, take a breath and give yourself credit for what you've done and then go teach somebody else how to do it. Absolutely. A lot of us set the bar and then by the time we reached it, we've put the bar up here and then we forgot that we <laughs> reached the bar. The first time, and we're constantly in that space. So I love that you said that. And for someone who has done the work that you've done and poured into so many people, it is definitely has legs. It's, it, it's meaningful that you share that insight. So you mentioned that Beyond the Ball Media and everything else you do, it aims to educate, enhance, and elevate the perspective of our, our communities. Can you elaborate on how you achieve this through your podcast network? For sure. So what we've done is we're starting with Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. And that one has the goal of that particular podcast is to help a thousand 
entrepreneur will help a hundred entrepreneurs successfully generate their first thousand dollars in business, right? So how am I doing? How am I educating our community there? So I have two episodes that I release every week. One is a general episode around content that could be marketing. It could be interviews and I'm sharing insight that I've learned or getting insight from other people during interviews. But then I also do a quick episode on Friday. I call it my fast break Friday episode. And there I will just give a lesson that I've learned either that week or something that I'm currently incorporating in my business, right? Like today I talked about keeping your costs low. And one of the things that I've realized in my business is I would always want to buy the newest equipment, buy all the new tech, but I wasn't in a position to buy it. So just sharing lessons like that to where they're quick, they're applicable and people can take it and then get some motivation to apply it. And then what we're, what I'm going to continue to do is uh, we're getting ready to roll out another show. And this show is going to be geared towards fatherhood, right? So educating our community in that respect, because just as individuals don't feel accomplished in business or in life or whatever it might be, there's another group of men who don't feel accomplished as fathers, who don't feel that they have the tools to be fathers. And I'm creating this show not to say that I know everything because I have a 11 month old baby boy. So I don't know everything about fatherhood by far, but I'm just going to share what I've learned. I'm just going to share what I've done. And so now we're going to be pouring in holistically, right? Because we're doing the business side, but then we're also going to talk about the family side and fatherhood. So going about it like that, when as we identify other shows and other concepts that we want to roll out, that's going to continue to further that education from a holistic perspective, right? Covering the whole person. That is how we're going to continue to elevate our perspectives and share those stories in that way. Awesome. Awesome. And congratulations on that uh, sweet 11 month old baby boy. That's awesome. Thanks. So that's great, man. And the opportunity to expand your network and the podcast that you create and what I'm hearing is this is stuff that I know and this is stuff that I care about. And that's what you are sticking with, right? And then again, a new experience for you, fatherhood. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. have to be 11 years in. I could be 11 months in and share because now it's going to be a progression because guess what little man's going to do? It's continue to grow, <laughs> give you more lessons mm -hmm. and more, you're right? You're going to continue to grow. And more man. opportunities yeah. to then bring in that part, right? And then you'll have fathers who can bring in their experiences. It's mutually beneficial. And that is the opportunity of the creative, right? And the person with the platform is to create spaces that creates reciprocity in all ways. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, man. I love that. So you're a two-time TEDx speaker and a best-selling author. Mm -hmm. How do you leverage these experiences to enrich the content and reach of your podcast? Yeah. Oh, man. You can, Okay. That's a Gail King type question right there. Okay. So just in terms of leveraging experiences, right? Because in, in my second TEDx talk, I talked about the power of storytelling. And I talked about how people are 12 times more likely to remember stories when they're shared. Well, they're 12 times more likely to remember facts when they're shared within a story. So for me, every episode for the most part is storytelling. Every episode I come in storytelling, 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 because I want to create that relatability. And the most influential TED Talks that have been given are story told, are storytelling based, right? The most influential leaders of our generation and generations that have stepped behind the podium and that have spoke, they have either story told or they've done a great job of casting the vision, i.e. Dr. Martin Luther King. He casted the vision. He painted the picture. I see little black boys and little black girls and, and little white boys and little white girls playing on fields, right? Playing outside. So you have to be able to cast a vision to where people want to lock arms with you around this vision, around this purpose, so that every time they show up, they're motivated not only to listen, but they're motivated to also share with other people. And just bringing it full circle, TEDx the theme of their platform is innovative ideas worth sharing, right? So how can we create an innovative idea every episode of our podcast to where it's worth somebody saying, I want to push that out. I want to share that with somebody else. So that's what it's all about for me, man. Just finding a, a unique way just to share my, my current situation to help somebody out, but selfishly also to help me out too, man. 
Because, you know, I want to learn more because I know if you're able to learn more, then you're able to teach more. So that also will allow me to expand my impact, influence, and the income as well. Listen, the income is important and we get to monetize off of the work that we do. Because mm-hmm. also thinking about that bar, we also got to think about all the dues that we have actually paid already. <laughs> so when it's mm-hmm. time to get paid, it's time yeah. to get paid. And that is okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. You yes, know. sir. Hey, it's, absolutely. It's okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So in your view, what role does podcasting play in promoting diversity and inclusion, especially in the context we're in Black History Month, but obviously we celebrate it all year round. What role does podcasting play in your opinion? Yeah. Somebody asked me before j- just about, about DEI and the role that I think it plays. For me, podcasting is my DEI effort, right? Because I, I'm not necessarily going to go into a boardroom and advocate for women's rights and everything like that. I would, but I haven't had the chance. However, another way that I can go about creating DEI is by empowering women with their voices, giving them the tools that they need to start their podcast, then showing them, okay, now that we've got this in place, how can we further expand that reach, right? Showing them frameworks and giving them tools that I've invested in and that I've learned to where now they can begin to leverage these skill sets to where if you're getting paid six times less than different cultures, Asian cultures, Caucasian cultures, whoever it might be, well, how can we shorten that gap? We can shorten that gap by showing you how to increase your prices, showing you how to increase your value. And that is me doing my effort in terms of DEI. Of course, I would love to do other things as well, but I know that this is where I feel called to right now and doing it this way. So that, that that's what I say when it comes to DEI. I'm equipping people with these tools, with this education, with these experiences, so that ultimately they can get that income and close that gap to then further the causes and the passions and the desires that they have. Yeah, and I think we don't give enough credit to the information disparity, right, and access disparity of certain things. And so when we have it and when we have that knowledge and then to say, okay, I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm not going to hoard it. I'm going to push it out there and let more people know, because as we know, you teach a person how to fish, they're going to keep fishing. And so Mm -hmm. that's what you're doing. That's a big deal. And I I commend you for even being in that space to say, I'm going to share this knowledge because it's too good to hold to myself. You know, for, for sure, sure, man. Yeah, for sure. So man. you've created a platform for real and relevant conversations. Can you share a particularly impactful episode or dialogue that embodies this mission? So taking it back to Dr. Emmett Gill, and Dr. Gill has done a lot of work and continues to do work in the uh, mental health space. And he also has created like a level of advocacy and he has a platform he's created called Athlete Talk. That's probably one of my favorite interviews that, that I've done for a while. And it's just because he, he's done a lot of work in the athletic space. And he talks about how we have to make sure that we can't give these young leaders keys to a Lamborghini, right? And this is an analogy, keys to a Lamborghini, but not show them how to drive, right? So you got to think about what tools are we providing our young black men? And I'm, and I'm saying that because I, I have a heart for young black men, but how can we expect these individuals to be successful on a platform or in a place to where they never were trained with the tools? So in our conversation, he talks about that. He talks about training up the next generation. He talks about understanding that these individuals just aren't this one identity. They're not just an athlete, but they're sons, they're brothers, they're community leaders. And he really broke that down in our dialogue. So this was definitely one of my favorite conversations with Dr. M. McGill, because he just has a different perspective that other people uh, don't have in terms of mental health and in terms of being one mental, one black mental health counselor in an environment that is probably 90, 95% Caucasian. Yeah, man, that's so important. I'll I'll never forget. I watched a documentary a while ago. It's probably five or six years old, maybe even older about uh, football players who basically lost everything at a certain point once their careers Mm -hmm. were over. And the shame and the burden and the guilt that was just, they couldn't even lift their eyes to the camera when they were talking about these type of things that they went through and, and things that they spent their money on. And a lot of it, you think it's 
on that Lamborghini, a lot of it was friends and family and buying somebody this and buying somebody that. And it's just never turning off the faucet of support for others. And then when it was time, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no understanding of investing, no understanding of creating their own or building their own or expanding. Why is so important that in all industries, in all aspects of the Black professional and creator, there is other stuff, right? We have to talk about the fact that your come up is going to be different than what you see on media, right? It's going to look different. Uh -huh. it, if you try to follow that same model, you're going to be hard pressed. We've got to under have mental health support, overcoming socialized uh, behavior support, and then the support to move us into that future. You on a field and you making touchdowns mm -hmm. and you happy and now you're here and your identity is gone. That says something about the deliberateness inside of that as well. So to have folks to understand that off the gate and to try to support, that's amazing because it's necessary. It's extremely yeah. necessary, man. Yeah, extremely for necessary. For sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. So with the success of podcasters at the heart of your community's rewards, um, so you can talk a little bit about that. Could you share a success story of someone who has become a go-to expert in their field through your network? Yes, sir. So through my community that I have, it's called the Get Paid Podcast community. Man, we have Dr. Miriam Smith. She's the host of the Empowering New Nurses podcast. Before I met Dr. Smith, she had no social footprint whatsoever. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, she'd have none of that. But after some time, like the first three months, she was able to get like 300 subscribers on her YouTube, which was super, super awesome for her. And then I was talking with her the other day and she was able to be able to generate a thousand dollars sales in her books. She launched the podcast then she wrote the book all through the same process. And then she was able to generate a thousand. So shout out to Dr. Smith. But then there's other people, even like Coach Ed Jones. He's the host of the Player Development Pod. And his podcast, he talks about player development, right? So helping athletes as well as athletic directors and different people like that helping them get an understanding of what player development is all about. So educating people in that way. My man put on a conference, sold 100 plus tickets from his conference. He was able to generate $15,000 between conference tickets, podcast sponsorship around the conference. And then now he's even came back around and started doing a cohort to where he's training people that want to get in that player development space. And he says it all the time. He says, and it all started from the podcast. And now he's about to do the conference again. So there's there's a lot of stories like that, like those individuals. And then we got another guy named RJ Zimmerman. And he talked about sobriety and mental health. And then he started doing some coaching. And then even further than that, he's helping people start that sobriety journey and helping them go from being alcoholics to being present fathers. And I mean, like the list of stories just goes on, but you know, th those are some of the people that I'm just really and extremely proud about because those people were action takers. They showed up, they asked me questions, we talked about it, and then they took the action and they went and got the results. So I'm, I'm really proud of them and really excited for the success that they've been having. That's awesome, man. It, it says everything about application is one thing to get knowledge. It's another thing to start applying mm -hmm. said knowledge. <laughs> so, so um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so in your program, that intentionality is super important. And I love that you've created that Get Paid to Podcast. That's the name of it? Yeah, Get Paid, <laughs> get paid with, with podcasting. podcasting. Yes, sir. Get paid All right, awesome. So your advice to podcasters is to get clear on their audience and identify their pain points. Can you walk us through how you applied this principle to your podcast and the impact it had? Yes, sir. So in, in terms of getting clear on who's your audience, a lot of times people are like, well, I can talk to a lot of people. And I know you know this because you talk to many podcasts. You probably talk to more podcasters than me. But, you know, the people are like, I can talk to anybody. I can talk to people 20 to 40 and all this. I always say just start with one person. And then I say, begin to think, who are the people that come to you and approach you most asking you to help them? Who are the people that come to you? And then typically when they come to you, what are they asking you with help for? Okay. So when we identify who's this person, then we want to go a little bit deeper on them. What are they watching? Who are people that they look up to? Who are people that they admire? And when we begin to look at some of that data, then we're able to identify, okay, there's this individual and they are 20. What is a 21 year old struggling with right now? Because now we're talking about the pain points. A 21 year old is probably struggling with 
maybe a little bit of identity, maybe trying to figure out what's the next thing they need to be doing in their life, right? Trying to navigate through these things. So when we talk about the pain points, we then want to just create a solution for that pain point. This can look like you doing a series on adulting 101 for that 21 year old. This could look like you just having a set an adulting 101 segment in your show to where you're addressing the pain point. Or even if you want to help them become a lead, you can do a freebie, put out a freebie and say, hey, we're going to list out all these adulting 101 videos and you can get this freebie if you give us your email address, your telephone number and your name. So in terms of identifying that audience, we will be able to identify them by giving them a chance to respond to a call to action that we put out, right? Then we can get some data. Who are you? How old are you? All those different things. And then solving the pain point, we just listen to people. What are you struggling with? You listen to people and they're going to tell you. And then when they tell you what the pain is, then you should go and create a product that solves that pain point. Yeah, that's smart. Masterclass. You just gave one and I appreciate it. <laughs> that's awesome, man. So Beyond the Ball Media offers a variety of insights and strategies for success. Can you share one strategy that has significantly impacted your growth or the growth of those in your network? Besides start a podcast. Man. <laughs> I was about to say, got to be a podcast. Okay, so after you start the podcast and then you become the expert, right? Because you show up every week and you're talking about you're talking about topics around in the same overall theme, right? Or at least you should, uh, I believe. The next natural step for you should be to teach. And I don't want to say to speak because I don't want people to get overwhelmed, but somebody's going to ask you, hey, that thing that you talk about on your podcast, that, that thing that you're always telling people about, can you teach me how to do that thing? So your next step should be teaching either somebody else or it should be teaching a group. You can find a local high school and depending on what your depending on what your area of expertise is, right? That sh that would determine if that area of expertise is meant for high school students or it's not, okay? Just talking about if it's graphic or not or whatever that might be. But go and teach some students at a school. Go and teach some adults at a nonprofit. And then as you begin to do that, then you'll begin to develop more confidence. And as you develop more confidence, now we can talk about going and get on a stage and speaking. And now we can talk about you getting paid to speak because speaking is one of the things that has definitely furthered my business. Because when I learned and understood how to speak and how to move an audience in person, then I was able to start doing webinars because webinars requires a different level of being tactical right so i don't want to go too deep there i don't want to overwhelm nobody but teaching teaching is the next way because when you teach other people they're going to tell more people so mm -hmm. then your authority will be furthered your impact will be furthered your influence will be furthered and like i said before then your income should be furthered as well yeah yeah all of that is important all of that is very necessary <laughs> it's about the progression expansion and elevation of wherever you started and just making sure that you are willing to be with the fact that it it will progress so the next idea that comes out of the first idea that, that, that happened go with it don't be like no i don't see you go with it it's a journey yeah. it's a path and to be willing to be a part of that path is only up from here <laughs> in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. yeah, man, that's cool. That's mm -hmm. cool. So in terms of collaboration and networking within the podcasting community, how do you approach partnerships and what advice would you give to podcasters looking to expand their networks? I would say go in asking questions, right? Don't just tell, oh, I know you need to connect with this person or you need to do, no, 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 no. Go in asking questions, right? And the reason I say that is because my colleague, Ariel Young, She's the host of the Work and Play podcast. I was at the Black Podcast Conference in Atlanta. I met a gentleman. He was the owner of a bar. Okay. This is in Atlanta. He was the owner of a bar. And he was like, hey, I'm trying to find, figure out how to sponsor some podcasts. And I said, what are you looking to do? And he said, well, I want more people to come to my club. I want more people to come check us out. So then after listening to him, I got his information. I talked to Ariel and I said, Ariel, you need to talk with this guy. He's looking to get more people in Atlanta into his club. So they had a conversation 
And then she was able to secure her largest sponsorship all because the dots met, right? So when we listen to people, they're going to tell us their pain. When they tell us their pain, that's when you identify who the right partner would be. Because, you know what I'm saying? I could have said, hey, yeah, I I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I want a sponsorship. Let me get that partnership money. But I don't live in Atlanta, so it wouldn't have benefited him. It would have been selfish for me, and then it would have crushed the relationship long term with that gentleman. So I like to ask more questions. I like to listen. I like to get clear on what people are looking to accomplish. And then when I get clear on what they're looking to accomplish, that's how I then can determine if I can help you, if I should direct you to somebody else. That's the way to go. Go in asking questions. First, lead with a compliment and then ask questions. And then now that'll open up the door. Yeah, sure. yeah, man. I like everything you said. And yeah, you the one, man. People listen to him, listen to Jonathan, and go check out what Jonathan has to offer you because it's real. That integrity piece of it is important and it's missing in a lot of coaching, consulting, and partnerships. Really, to have critical thought, to have some integrity inside of it, it's rare. So yeah, I see it, I hear it, and I appreciate it out of you. With your platform, Get paid with podcasting.com. What essential tips can you offer to podcasters aiming to monetize their content effectively? Yeah, yeah, man. First of all, thank you for that compliment. But I would say stop trying to monetize on YouTube first. So many people, so many of you are like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube. I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube. I'm not even monetized on YouTube. But the reason why I want to say that and lead with that is because people spend all this time trying to get monetized on YouTube, but they don't even realize that when you finally are monetized on YouTube, now you need to drive even more traffic to your channel to get more views, more watch time to where you can really start to see money trickle in. I'm, I'm going back to what I said before, right? Because repetition is the mother or father of all learning. Find a problem that a significant group of people are facing. Once you find that problem, find those people, right? Or either you can go people first, problem second, right? Because the people are going to be in the same place that are dealing with the same problem. Then after that, create a product for them. It could be a $17 course, $27 course, $37 course. And then as you're getting 10 people in there, 15 people in there, 20 people in there, they're going to begin to tell you, and, and, and we talk about this in, in my program, so I'm not just going off on a rant, <laughs> but after you get 10, 15 people in there, they're going to start to give you some feedback on the program if you ask for it. So let them get in the program, ask them for feedback after they've completed the program. What'd you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What brought you in? How has this helped you? What was some success that you had going through this course? right? So we're getting this data and we're getting people giving us real life stories. So now we can go through and perfect the course, improve the course, and then we can raise the price on it because now it's been tried and true. And if something's tried and true, we, we don't have to tweak it as much. So I say, don't focus on monetizing on YouTube first. Focus on teaching somebody something. And then once you teach it, right? You might do it live first in Zoom, teach it on Zoom, then come back and then put it behind a paywall and just sell it as a course because you recorded it already. And then you can perfect it as you move on. But create your first product. <laughs> create your first product. Not trying to monetize on YouTube, but I, I'm, I'm done, man. I'm stepping <laughs> off my soapbox. I'm done. No, I mean, it's real. Some of us need to identify uh, where there are modern day sharecropping um, situations going on. <laughs> And where we are working, Ooh. working the field, working the field, and then it, it doesn't oh. uh, doesn't quite pan out ever. And for those who Ooh. who it does, you know, well, I'm a I'm a critical thinker, so we're gonna we we gonna always go there. But it's like we got to think about things like this, even though you might see some people winning on their levels to it, right? And there are sacrifices. And there are also things that are being neglected because there's one focus and where there's a whole world to focus on and opportunities. Man, modern day sharecropping. It's yeah. true though. Golly, that's so true. I, <laughs> man, because I mean, we can go down the line because think about it. Think Okay, so let, let, let's let just say there is somebody out there. They're like, man, but I got 
uh, a hundred that well I, I'll, I'll take Coriel for example Coriel she she's an OG in the podcast space and I saw her put out a post the other day and she was like I have over a hundred and fifty thousand followers on Instagram but I think she put out a post and it might have got like 150 likes and she was like make it make sense that don't make sense in any stratosphere so if you're investing so much time into an individual platform and expecting them to put you as a priority over them as a priority, it's never going to happen. We have to make ourselves a priority over any platform. Yes, use the platforms, but make sure that you leverage it to where it's benefiting you, not to where it's benefiting them. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. So I got two last questions for you. <laughs> what technological tools or services do you consider essentials for podcasters based on your recommended tech stack? What technological tools do I consider to be essential? Okay, for one, I'll say get you a good microphone. And shout out to y'all because I won this microphone from y'all. You probably don't remember. I remember. You probably don't I remember. remember. That's I won awesome, this man. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Again. man. Man, this is the Samsung Q9U. I won from the Afros and Audio family. Thank you. But this is my favorite microphone. Like, this is my favorite microphone. I got the other Samsung. I got some sure. This is my favorite microphone. So you want to get you a quality microphone, like for sure, for sure. And then outside of that, I also would say get you a solid DSLR camera. And those two things. And then the last thing is you want that USB connector that you can connect into your camera and then connect that into your computer. And the reason I say you wanna get that camera is because not only can you do podcast recordings on online, but then you also can take the same camera and then when you go and do a live presentation, you can go and record that as well, right? You can go, and I have to add one more and you don't have to do this one, but I'm just gonna add this one in because we're, we're podcasters, so we're big on audio, right? Uh, then if it's in your budget, then get the Rode Wireless Go 2. You know what I'm talking about. Th those little microphones, I also would recommend that. And with those, what, four pieces of equipment, I said the camera, I said the mic, and I said the wireless mics, and I said the cord. With those four pieces of equipment, you're good to get rolling for a good little bit. Because them wireless microphones, you can use that to record your solo episodes at the house or on the go. And with that camera and then with this mic right here, you're good, you know, in your studio setup. So those are the pieces that I recommend. But like I said, the Rode wireless go to, you don't have to get those. But I'm just saying, if you got all that, then you would be good to go. Nice. Yeah. You all right, man. Go. I appreciate that. The last question is, where can people find you? And before I ask you that, though, if there's anything else you want to promote or share with the people this is your time and then share where people can find you online and social media. For sure. Uh, man, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the platform that you all have built. Thank you for uh, Afros and audio, which y'all have done phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. And I've had the privilege and the pleasure to be able to grace the stage virtually. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see y'all in person. We're going to get together in person, but thank you for all y'all have done and all the work you're doing. In terms of where people can find me, if you want to know more information about like what we do with Get Paid with Podcasting and that community, just go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. And my podcast is Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. Uh, but yeah, that's really all I got. Connect with me on social media, Jonathan Jones Speaks. All that's right. It, man. But once again, thank you, thank you for the platform, man. And th thank you for all that, that you all thank do. Thank you, man. I appreciate that for sure. And I appreciate you for being in this space. It's one of those things where you want folks like you here supporting and creating content and moving the needle, moving us forward in a way that actually gives and not takes. And so that's a big deal. So thank you for who you are. I'm going to close this out. All right. I want to give a big thanks to our Afros and Audio and Black Podcasters Association members for supporting our commitment for community and collaboration. If you'd like to join the Black Podcast Association, the link will be in the description. And if you want to join us at the sixth annual Afros and Audio Podcast Festival, visit afrosandaudio.com. Follow Afros and Audio on all social media channels, and you can find and follow me at Talib Jasir on Instagram. Thanks again, Jonathan, for being a part of Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. All right. We